Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this uh, series I'm putting together, we are going from Earth all the way out to Jupiter with the eventual goal of being landing on Io. And I took off from Earth using the XR2 Raven Star, but since it cannot make the long journey out to Jupiter without edi editing config files, we instead uh, docked the XR2 up with the Aero Freighter and we're taking the Aero Freighter out to Jupiter. And as I said in all the videos, uh, the, at the time of the recording, the Aero Freighter is not available for general download, so I cannot provide a link to get this at this time. With all that said, let's uh, switch camera views here and jump back into our flight. So, let me unpause. Like, where is my sound? So, in the previous video, we went about 27 days, because if I recall correctly, we were at 60400, uh, I think, when I started that video. So, we're, we're almost all the way over to Io. We're just, so, well, I'll just quickly, um, this is where we are. This is the green line representing where we currently are. And this green line here is our path. This blue line here is where Io is currently at, and the blue circle is its orbit around Jupiter. And these orange lines here are the hypothetical time at which we will arrive at that spot. And when we get there, we have this huge encounter velocity of 11,000, almost 12,000 meters per second. So if we're going to get into orbit around Io, we have to eliminate a lot of that. Maybe not all of it, but a big chunk of it. So currently we're on track to arrive with a altitude of 484 kilometers. And we'll be about 640 kilometers off from the base. So let's do just a little bit translation. of translation to bring some of those numbers down, mainly the minimum altitude because the off-plane distance of the base is changing so fast that um, it's kind of a waste of time to bother trying to bring that down, I think. So go that way. So yeah, I'm just uh, focusing on the minimum, al minimum altitude primarily. I feel like at this point, you know, we're get, I guess we're getting relatively close now, so we should decide, like, on a parking orbit. I don't really know, like, what the situation at Io is like. So let's just say, let's say 200. That's probably higher than it needs to be. But I also don't want to be, you know, at 1,000 kilometers or something, because I feel like with all the, uh, the gravitational pulling of the different moons in the mass of Jupiter... Um, I wonder how stable our orbit is even going to be. Uh, we don't have non-spherical gravity sources enabled yet, so that might work in our favor. I don't know. Um, anyway, let's. Uh, so that's going. So we did a little bit of a correction there. Let's look out front. We are 165 um, m away from Io right now, and let's look at orbit says that we are 14,000 seconds away from from periapsis and this jumped up on this jumped up in the last video which shocked me but i think it must have just been the way io is orbiting around jupiter all right so let me just think here so we currently have 12,000 meters per second programmed into uh, burn time calculator that's higher than what this says but um, we'll go ahead and keep that in for now <clears throat> and it says we need a thousand seconds to burn off that much velocity so okay let's move forward a bit more <clears throat> uh, we're going to do you know incremental steps here being careful as we go forward so maybe we'll bring our PET down to uh, let's go to 6,000 So a little bit of time warp. That scares me every time I see something fly by. I wonder if I was like this close to hitting something just now. <clears throat> no, I think it was just Jupiter in the background. Okay, back to time warp here. And again, we're going to go for 6,000. And then we're going to take a look at our approach to Io. And then we'll start getting into the retrograde position. 
I seeing stuff out of that window is freaking me out. Out of sight, out of mind. <clears throat> okay, so almost at six thousand. And we'll go with that. Overshot it just a little bit. Alright. Oh, that's cool. Rotation. Let me just take a moment to enjoy that. Oh, I forgot to shut the HUD off. That is very cool. Very beautiful. I like it. Very nice. Let me see if I can see anything else. Probably not, because Jupiter is uh, taking up the majority of our screen here. But that is very cool. I love it. Okay, so that's what our altitude currently is, 68M, and going down. And currently, so the minim minimum altitude is held pretty well. 27.3 is our encounter time. We're getting very close to that. Translation. Let's translate out some of that minimum altitude. Just a little bit, though. We're really close to <clears throat> kind of what I arbitrarily chose as a um, a parking orbit. I don't really know the characteristics of IO, so, but I, I'm guessing this is probably okay. Should have done some homework on that ahead of time. Okay, so here we are. Here's IO. That's where we're going to uh, meet up, and that's going to happen in a little bit longer. So PET is, uh, we stopped at 6,000, so let's let's actually get the vessel into the retrograde position for IO. Rotation. Let's make that happen now so that we're not scrambling at the end. I don't know how well it's gonna hold. So let's see. Maybe if I go, go that way for a moment. Translation. Okay, just making sure I'm on rotation. Yeah, I am, because it says it right here. So if prograde is down, I'm assuming retrograde is up. Makes sense, doesn't it? So, let's see here. So that must be orbit plus or orbit minus. Wait a minute. Let me switch over to this view for a moment. Because usually retrograde is like that bullseye, but maybe maybe that crosshair was retrograde. But let me just get to this view for a moment, so I'm in uh, see things more fam that are more familiar to me. Although I love the virtual cockpit of the... There's retrograde, I see it now. I love the virtual cockpit of the aero freighter. I'm not usually a big fan of um, virtual cockpits. They tend not to look very good or they're... Mm, otherwise lacking, but this one is great. So, yeah, so that was retrograde, okay. Okay, so we're almost there. Just a little bit more correction, and I just want to—I just want to be in the position well ahead of time because the aero freighter is a beast of a vessel, and you know it's very slow to move. So we want to think way, way ahead. Usually, like in the absolute beginner guide, I would say I think around 100 seconds in the Delta glider and XR2, but. I want to make sure I get these positions done way, way, way in advance. Um, and now it won't hold, of course, so we'll have to come back to it, but at least we're in the vicinity for now. So let's go ahead and warp time forward, and let's get down to 3,000 seconds. And we'll take it easy with our time warps now. So that's 3.5, 3.4, 3.3, 2, 1, and... There we are. So what kind of distance do we have now? So we're still in the retrograde position. How is this stuff holding up? Pretty good. And 
here we are so we're just we're, we're really close now all right when do I want to um, all right let me think let me switch to this view again even though it's not as cool so 32 M Go back to this view. And we need to be, we need to begin breaking at six point two M. Six point yeah, about six point two M. Now right, let's go forward a bit more. So we're at thirty three M, so a bit forward a bit more. So let's go down to 2000 and see how things are. So there's 2000. We're at 23M. So we should actually be able to see IO and it should be right behind us. There it is. Cool. Awesome. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's look at our stuff again. So, eleven point six five is our encounter velocity. So, let's go ahead and update. Now that we're pretty close in, let's go with eleven point uh, or eleven thousand seven hundred. So, we need a five point nine m distance to get rid of that much velocity. All right, so warping time forward. We're at 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. You know, I don't trust being able to go back and forth, so I'm going to bring up this view for now, just so that I can make sure I do my burn at the right time. <clears throat> so that's 15M, that's 16. That's probably planocentric. So let's go by this one. All right, let me think here. We need 6M. Okay, let's go forward. So here we are. There's IO coming right up to it. Look outside for just a moment. And when we actually start the braking burn, we'll, we'll look at some external views just because it'll be cooler, and not because we have to have the external view, but just because it'll look nice. All right, so we want, let's take a look at our encounter velocity so it's still holding in there. So so we, we estimated our total delta V a little high and we estimated, if so if we start this a little bit early too, we should be in good shape. All right, 10, nine. Let me just look outside. Okay, so eight, all right, we're really close, really close, eight, seven, and we're going to begin the burn at like 6.0, like right when it flips over to 5.9. All right, back to real time now. So right when it flips over to 5.9. And burning. Okay. So we are slowing down relative to IO. I don't think we need transects anymore. Let's bring up orbit. So we have referenced IO. That's really loud in my ears. Hopefully it's not blasting the speakers in the playback. And our eccentricity is coming down. So we are making this happen. We got a super long burn. Really long burn. Why am I moving? Why am I moving? Why am I moving? Why am I moving? Translation. Rotation. Why am I rotating? Translation. Rotation.
Let's get back to root, uh, retrograde. <coughs> Let me go ahead, let me get a little bit more oriented and then I'll turn on the retrograde autopilot. Actually, one thing I need to do, since this is such a massive burn, I need to, I need to uh, rotate slightly outward. I think, yeah, I think it's outward when you begin the burn. Because if I'm trying to control, yeah, there we go. So my periapsis is going up a little bit. And then once we pass periapsis, we would need to rotate slightly inward. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, find, okay, so let's find a camera angle that's better, like that one. So we made it. We're here. Why am I rotating? Alright, so a long, long, long way to go on this burn. Let's time warp through it incrementally so that we don't mess up our periapsis and crash into the planet, the, the moon. Let me go ahead and turn on. Let me, let me get into the retrograde position and then turn on the retrograde autopilot to have it hold. And we will deal with our periapsis after we get through some more of this burn. So turn on the retrograde autopilot. What is it going to do now? Never mind. Turn off the retrograde autopilot. I guess we'll just have to exercise patience. It might have been getting ready to put itself into the retrograde position relative to Jupiter because Jupiter is probably the strongest gravitational influence. And despite the fact that I have IO up on orbit, MFD, and I have IO up on the HUD, I think in Orbiter 2010, I remember that these autopilots don't care what you have selected. It, I think they're keyed to the strongest gravitational body. Could be wrong on that. So let me warp time forward now that we're kind of held a little bit. When we get down a little bit lower, I'm going to come out of time warp. Let me come out of time warp now, turn off kill rotate, and and what I want to do is just, um, let me roll a little bit just so I'm level, because it's just easier for me to think if I'm level. And if I rotate slightly outward, because we have not yet passed periapsis, so if I rotate slightly outward, my periapsis will go up which is currently what I want to have happen because I want it to be closer to 200. Once we passed periapsis, uh, we would have to rotate a little bit inward, although if you get once you get close to the end of the burn, you really just need to, if you're not near periapsis, you just need to stop the burn and then do a couple orbital maneuvers because if you get really far past periapsis, then you practically have to burn like a 90 degree angle to the planet, uh, the moon the body so so in order to keep myself level with that center line I'm going to apparently need to have some constant pitch up I think what must what must be happening the reason it's changing is because as we're getting closer I just think our orientation to IO must be changing so that okay see I'm just keeping in some rotation to try to stay level okay the PEA is still going up which is what I want let's take a look outside really quick for this crazy unrealistic burn Still have, what is that, nine minutes? A long time on this burn. And we're at 20 minutes. Let me pause. <laughs> 
let's uh, switch camera views here. So very long burn, but uh, you know I don't like to leave out any parts. So we'll go ahead and pick up right here uh, when I when we come back in the next video, uh, because I do think it's interesting. Um, if I were new and I was watching this happen, I would certainly want to know, well, how how do you manage this large of a burn? What are you doing? I'm not to say that everything I'm doing is correct, but if I were watching somebody else do it, I, I wouldn't want to miss out because you know if I if I just finish the burn off camera and come back, um, you know, who knows what happened. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And when we come back, uh, we should finish up the burn, I would imagine, in the next video. So I will see you in the next part.